Thank you for watching Conscious Consumer Network. The live stream broadcast is free to view. You can pause and rewind live broadcasts to catch up or view shows at a later date by accessing our free archives of all shows. Check out our broadcast guide to see what's on. You can show your support by donating to our network support fund. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter or subscribe to the monthly newsletter for updates. We thank you for supporting free and independent media. If I burn, let me die to burn again. If I burn, let me die to burn again. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Herbal Knowledge Keepers. And today, our sponsor for the internet is the Berean Cafe in Eureka Springs, Arkansas. And as you'll note, I have this fabulous backdrop. This whole building is absolutely beautiful. It was built this year, and they've been kind to uh, allow us to do our broadcast here. So we're thrilled about that. And today's show is uh, with my co-host, Dakota Granny Woman, and I'm Blue Star Dear Woman. And today's show is osteoarthritis and phytotherapy. And as you know, for those of you who have been watching our broadcast, this is based upon the theme of introducing over and over and educating our public about the herbal database, which is an intricate a collection of hundreds of thousands of resources in uh, herbal and medicinal understandings, research, documentation, and descriptions, as well as videos and pictures. And we are now uh, presenting under the umbrella of Full Bloom Productions. That's our nonprofit, uh, 501c3. And you'll see that URL on the front of our broadcast. And we'd like to encourage you, if you'd like to uh, join the conversation with us, you can come to um, the chat room and you'll be asked to sign in, a free sign in, and or you can call us and uh, join in, ask questions, or participate and contribute. So thank you and welcoming you, Dakota Granny Woman. Hi, everybody. It's great to be back with a very interesting topic today that is um, really, really important for those of us who are lucky enough to be getting older. Uh, osteoarthritis, which is very, very common amongst the older set, uh, approximately 70% mm, of those over 65. And... Um, there's a lot that can be done to help prevent uh, progression and el eliminate uh, the pain and suffering. So we're going to open up the herbal database and start showing you. And this herbal database is downloadable. It's accessible, actually, is the word. Yeah. And well, it's, yeah, it's not really downloadable. That's right. <laughs> it's accessible. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, you'll find it at herbaldatabase.org. This is the opening screen. And I'm just going to walk you through this uh, focused on osteoarthritis. And uh, there'll be plenty of information here for those of you who are not yet uh, subscribed to the database. So be sure to stick with us. There's enough here to get you started dealing with this disorder or preventing it. Uh, this is the opening screen. And the fastest way to find what you're looking for is to use the search box. And um, so again, that's that search thing there is nothing that you click on. You just start typing. And I'm going to, just going to start with arthritis because um, there can be a lot of confusion about arthritis. It's a very general term. And it turns out there are a lot of different types of arthritis. Um, again, for the those of you who are new to this, these colors are important. Uh, the green color has to do with a condition or a method of therapy. The purplish colors are phytochemicals. Uh, white is usually a plant. It might be something different. And then uh, the blue is a, a definition. So everything that you see is connected in some way to the central label here, which at the moment is arthritis. And um, everything on the right up here, you can usually kind of ignore that because it only has to do with the uh, top level items, which we're not really looking at right now. So under arthritis, you see we've got um, uh, a number, we're not gonna get into all of these, but I just wanted you to see there's several different varieties of arthritis. And um, uh, including, if you wanna look at it from the point of view of um, uh, TCM, which is traditional Chinese medicine, um, and uh, rheumatoid arthritis, we're not going to get into today, but I just want you to realize there's a lot that can be done for that as well. So let's go back to arthritis. As I'm clicking, you'll see that on the bottom of the screen, there is a breadcrumb trail of where I've just been to make it easy to go back to. Uh, bee venom acupuncture. This is where you really can start drilling down into different types of therapies. <coughs> bee venom acupuncture is a specialized acupuncture, of course, that's used for arthritis in general very effectively. But we're going to just go directly now to osteoarthritis. That bee venom uh, acupuncture, my understanding was that actually came prior to traditional acupuncture. Is that... I don't know about that. I've never heard that, but mm -hmm. it's possible. I mean, there's uh, uh, apotherapy, bee venom therapy has been used for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and so it would make sense that the Chinese would use it specifically on acupuncture points. Mm -hmm. uh, so here we are in osteoarthritis, and you can see we've got a lot to talk about today. Uh, again, this central label here is the focus of everything that's on the screen. If I click this upward arrow, we have got a lot of information right there about osteoarthritis in general. And um, I have a question, Dakota. Mm -hmm. I've always heard the word osteoporosis. That's uh, about the bones. Ah, and osteoarthritis is a particular kind of arthritis. Well, osteoporosis isn't arthritis at all. Okay. Osteo, I mean, excuse me, osteoporosis, is, they're so similar, it's easy to twist them around. Uh -huh. Osteoporosis is about um, the weakening of the bones themselves, mm -hmm. where holes appear in the bones, they um, get thinned out, and the concern is about fracturing, easy fracturing. We did a show on that not long ago, for those of you who are interested, look up our show on osteoporosis. Osteo has to do with the word bone, um, and uh, so that's why it's connected here with arthritis. So 
this is a particular type of arthritis. I'm going to explain what it is okay. before we get into how to deal with it. But first of all, these I'm scroll I'm showing you these different links. Any of these you can click on and read an article or watch a video. And then below that, we've got additional information. And we'll be going through this in detail. Uh, but first of all, um, I think I want to just explain a little bit about what osteoarthritis is and how it differs from other types of arthritis. So uh, this is really where uh, there's a breakdown of the cartilage itself in the joint. Um, and so, in fact, um, let's see here. I think there might be a photo here under subchondral bone. Let me just bring this up and see if I've got a good photo here. Okay, yeah, that's good. So what happens is this is a joint and here, you know, you're going to have two ends of bone here and then there's cartilage in between these bones that's made out of a, a special type of collagen it's different from collagen anywhere else in the body. And in osteoarthritis, what happens is this cartilage gets worn away until these two bones are touching each other. And that's very painful. Now, there are no nerve endings in the cartilage itself, but there are a lot of nerve endings in this bone. So when this wears away, a few things happen. Um, I don't know if you can see my pointer, but mm -hmm. these little knobs are called osteophytes. So the bone's trying to protect itself and it grows these little jagged bone spur osteophytes up and in an attempt to, to uh, create, to, to offset this, but it doesn't really work very well. Mm -hmm. And so it's interesting because not everybody who has osteoarthritis progresses to the stage where it's bone on bone. Some people, they develop it and it just kind of stays there. You've still got cartilage protecting your joint, but you still, you will have some pain. Um, this is a knee and knee osteoarthritis is, is one of the more common forms. So in the past, they've, they've referred to this kind of arthritis as a, um, uh, a wearing out type of arthritis. It's just kind of thought to be natural as we get older. We've been using these the, the knee and the hip, which are very weight bearing. Um, I forget the exact number, but every time we take a step, I think with the, the knee, seven times the body weight goes through the knee. And you can imagine over time mm -hmm. how that might wear out the cartilage. And we thought that's all that was going on. Uh, and the same for the hip. And I, I, it's many times more the weight of the body uh, that goes through the hip. So we thought that was really what was happening. And it tends to be more common in people who are overweight. So for a while, we thought, well, you know, that's one of the main causes is being overweight. But it's interesting because, and we're not talking about you know, just a little overweight, we're talking about very heavy. Uh, folks who are obese tend to get it in their knees and hips, but also their hands. And so there's hand osteoarthritis. Well, obviously, um, you know, that's not weight bearing. So something else is going on. Mm. Um, just to kind of point out a little bit more about this, this line here represents a uh, a synovial membrane and what it does is it produces synovial fluid which is kind of like an egg white mm. in fact that's where the word comes from um syno s y n uh is uh, from the word synonymous and ovium re refers to egg so it's or similar or syno uh, sy similar to an egg white. 
And uh, in rheumatoid arthritis, here's one of the differences. Uh, we recognize rheumatoid arthritis as an autoimmune condition where the body attacks the synovial membrane and breaks it down. Uh, we didn't think osteoarthritis was a, an autoimmune condition, but we're starting to recognize that a uh, similar process is going on where there's different um, cytokines, which are chemical messengers that are involved with the immune system that trigger inflammation and uh, the resulting pain. Cytokines <clears throat> are coming in here to break down this uh, cartilage. Well, it's cytokines that also break down the synovial fluid. And then there are certain N types of enzymes that are also involved in breaking this down that are normal in the body, but they are, for some reason, uh, just really hungry for our cartilage and they're overdoing it. So they're starting to recognize that the body is attacking itself again in the case of osteoarthritis. So Dakota, I have a question because I, um, I take MSM and boron solution to that. My understanding is boron um, adds some fluidity to the joint. So would it be uh, nurturing that synovial area? Um, well, we've got boron here and uh, you know, it, it is probably nourishing. I'm just going to go ahead and click on to boron. Mm -hmm. Now these items underneath osteoarthritis, unless it's green, have something to do with um, what treats osteoarthritis. Okay, so mm -hmm. when I, I'm just going to go back so people can see this again. Um, these green are going to be all involved with the pathophysiology or a treatment or another version of the disorder. These purple colors are phytochemicals. Now, boron is a mineral, but it is in plants. And so that's why it's purple. Mm -hmm. And you see when I click on this, this is what you're going to want to do is click on these and learn about them. So for example, we see that uh, these foods are very high in boron. Mm. And so that's one way that you can augment your diet. But we've also got borax. And borax is uh, what a lot of folks are using for a number of different conditions. You can read about borax and you might be thinking, oh my God, <laughs> that's laundry cleaning right. stuff, right? And it doesn't right. say anything on the package about using it medicinally. But um, this is a link that you can go to and uh, that some of this, this information comes from there. Uh, so you can read about it. It's a natural occurring mineral mined from dry salt lakes. Mm. Um, and it's sold as an um, in uh, technical or agricultural grade. It, it, these are all details about borax. But historically, you can read about how it's been used medicinally for a, a wide range of things. Mm -hmm. um, and then the doses are... Um, Let's see. Oh, there it is. Yeah, that's for boron. But uh, and I think on this one, you'll need to click on the link to get all of the details. And this is the link right here. So go there and you'll get a breakdown of how to mix it up to use it as an inexpensive source of boron. Boron does a lot of things, including taking of fluoride out of the body. Yeah. So up here you see it's a trace mineral and it's one of the phytochemicals we use to treat osteoporosis. Mm -hmm. um, these are other things. It's an essential nutrient for bone health. And so going back to osteoarthritis, one of the things that we see is like we used to think that only the cartilage was being attacked. But if we go back to the subchondral bone, we are discovering that in osteoarthritis, the bone is also being attacked. And it's particularly the subchondral. And that just refers to this lower part of the bone itself. Mm -hmm. And so 
one of the things that might be happening with the boron that's uh, helping osteoarthritis is that it's helping with all of the mineralization of mm -hmm. the subchondral bone. So is it possible for the bone to be regenerating or is it a more a protective application? Well, bone naturally regenerates. Mm -hmm. okay. And we need to uh, do, uh, basically it's through diet um, mm -hmm. to, to bring in the things that we need for uh, to help the bone regenerate. Right. But there are a lot of things that uh, interfere. For example, statin drugs uh, it can wind up uh, preventing this regeneration. Statin drugs are tied to both osteoporosis and osteoarthritis. So are certain drugs. Um, we might get to this in a minute. But what uh, is a statin drug? Drugs. Um, those are drugs that are typically used to lower cholesterol. Huh. And um, in fact, why don't we just go ahead and look it up? Uh, these are. This is why this database is hel helpful. Is because you can have a question like that and go, mm -hmm. "What is a statin drug?" And then um, mm -hmm. look it up if it's not already directly attached. Let me get my typing happening correctly. You see immediately, we see here a number of different categories. So I'm just going to go to this one. And um, we see a, a general heading here where you can learn about some of the things that statins do. They may cause um, mm -hmm. ALS like neurodegeneration. It can be associated with increased oxidation injury. Now, oxidation injuries involved in both osteoporosis and osteoarthritis. Um, oxidation injury. I mean, that sounds like, uh, is that not getting enough oxygen? No. Um, when in, the, in our metabolism, um, Oxygen is a key player for all kinds of the chemistry that's happening. Mm -hmm. It's moving around. Um, uh, it, it's very reactive. And so it's used for reactive chemical reactions, but it can be damaging when there's too much of it. And we have a term called reactive oxygen species mm -hmm. where it's uh, causing a uh, chemical changes that are unhealthy, unhelpful, destroying things. Okay. And um, you could kind of think of it like the rusting of metal. Right, that's what was going through my mind. Yeah. And so here are a bunch of articles that tell you more about the statins. Um, and then if you wanted to look for specific statin drugs, you could go here and see, these are some of the more common ones. Now, one of the things that I've done in the database is Whenever I found something that can help offset the damage, like if you were taking Lipitor, for example, mm. you're in danger of, first of all, some of these disorders. These are different uh, cardiomyopathies. That's where your, your heart muscle is being affected and weakened. Mm. Um, it can cause a type of hepatitis. Um, and this would be, Lipitor would be a typical yeah. uh, prescribed medication yeah, a in lot the of medical people, industry. Uh, another term for it is a torvastatin. Mm -hmm. And um, so here uh, you have uh, a number of different studies mm -hmm. about them. It can cause acute pancreatitis. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, there's a, these are all studies about the damage that's done just by this one statin drug. Yeah. So I would recommend before you take any drugs, you come to the database and look it up. Well, that's what I wanted to interject here is uh, for our viewers and listeners is to reiterate that this database is really <clears throat> a means of educating yourself on becoming your own advocate. And that's uh, readily becoming uh, a requirement in this day and age for anyone who's needing to get assistance in the medical profession. You need to do your research 
And this database will help you do that. Research those pharmaceuticals. Research your uh, alternatives. And uh, oh, it also uh, uh, in the database, I have also been finding everything I can that shows us what kind of interactions there might be using herbs and these drugs together. So mm -hmm. here's where you can see what herbs interact negatively with statins. By the way, this gray color represents anything that's poisonous or toxic. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you're on statins, stay away from Gotacola, grapefruit juice, and uh, red yeast rice, which is used as a supplement. Um, so anyway, let's go back to, and niacin, uh, by the way, let's go, I think that was here under nice. statin drugs. Niacin, if you're on statin drugs, taking niacin can help to offset some of the damage. And you'll, <clears throat> excuse me, you'll find studies about how niacin helps reduce some of the damage, but you don't need statins, basically. <clears throat> and uh, for instance, now niacin, if you had a question about that, you can go into the search box or you can click on that mm -hmm. on the uh, database and then get a whole other rich uh, content. <coughs> Excuse me, including cautions. Mm -hmm. Whenever there are cautions, um, those are added often separately, sometimes in the heading. So let's go back to osteoarthritis. Oops, I didn't spell it correctly. All right. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit, now that we've gotten into a little bit of what it does, um, I'm going to kind of go through this information panel with you because this is all really important. And I know not all of you are on or are, are subscribed to the database yet. And I want you to be able to watch this video and get some of the most important information about this. So, and a, a reminder uh, for those tuning in for the first time, if you go to episode one, uh, that's a whole instruction video on how to use this. Mm. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to go through this first screen. First of all, these first few words you see here, collagenase, uh, stromalysin, and matrix metalloproteinase. I know those are big words, but uh, those are enzymes that are the real bad guys in osteoarthritis. They break down cartilage faster than it can be restored. So where medical science is going now is they're trying to figure out ways to inhibit those enzymes mm -hmm. and see if they can inhibit them. Then the body can restore the cartilage uh -huh. the way that it's designed to do, right? Right. And then, so here, it's like you can take all the glucosamine you want, all the chondroitin sulfate, a lot of people know that taking glucosamine and chondroitin sulfate is supposed to uh, support the joints, and it does. Mm -hmm. But if these enzymes are too active, it doesn't matter. And that's why sometimes they don't work. People say, well, I'm taking all these, right? but um, I, I'm still having this uh, problem. So now where, where are you looking here right now for okay, those enzymes? Okay, so I'm going right here. Oh, okay. Um, gotcha. I'm just going to go through this because this this is key information mm -hmm. that okay. y'all are going to want to know. So then, um, in addition to the enzymes, there are inflammatory cytokines. There's a lot of different types of cytokines, and that's just think of it as like a the chemical messenger telling the immune system what it needs to do. Um, and when there's an immune overreaction, the cytokines are just a bit too busy. So inhibiting some of those can also be helpful. Now, do we have, uh, is that addressed in the medical industry at all? 
They're okay. just starting to get into it. Uh, in fact, Stanford, um, 25 scientists at Stanford were looking at the development of osteoarthritis. And what they have found is that it's really driven by this low-grade inflammation. Mm -hmm. And they're the ones that um, discovered how that is orchestrated by uh, an attack on the joints using these signaling proteins that are used to fight infections. That's the cytokines. That's an autoimmune response. Mm. So that totally redefines what osteoarthritis is. We didn't, we thought it was wear and tear, but now we're discovering uh. this low grade inflammation is an autoimmune response. And um, that has to do with how it gets started and how it progresses. Well, Dakota, with that mentioning of autoimmune, is it possible that we could trace all the deterioration and conflict in the body back to the autoimmune? <clears throat> well, and its functionality? It, it, well, we're finding more and more stuff is, but there are other things happening, like, uh, for example, the things that are going wrong via taking statin drugs, that's a whole different thing. Right. Um, if you're getting too much fluoride, the damage that's happening, that's a whole. So there's all these environmental toxins. Um, there are, there's something called the exosome, E-X-O-S-O-M-E. -E. That's all the stuff that's outside of us that affects our bodies. Mm -hmm. We've got that going on. But because of our external, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> because of all our external uh, challenges, yeah, isn't it essentially working on the autoimmune system? No, um, no. Auto autoimmune is what that means is that the immune system is attacking the body. It's the oh, immune oh. system ta attacking the body. So I'm probably needing to just use the word immune system. Yeah, that's probably to clarify this question. It would seem that if the immune system is healthy, yeah, then it the, its functionality is to repair or counter. Right. It it identifies the bad guys and, in particular, pathogens. Mm -hmm. You know, especially you know parasites and bacteria that right. shouldn't be uh, there. That sort of thing. But it would also apply to this particular arthritis as well. Yes. The immune system, um, its role in the in in the um, joints and bones and things like that is really to protect them from infection. Uh, and um, you know th there are other processes at work. Okay. Um, you may recall we were talking in a, a previous show about osteoclasts and osteoblasts. Mm -hmm. These cells that turn over bone and create new bone. They get rid of old and get bring in the new. Um, so there's regeneration processes that are happening because things wear out, you know, mm -hmm. and um, and the body's designed to replace what is being worn out. And there's a whole system there to get rid of waste material. And if that's not working, if the waste material isn't being taken out, that makes a breeding ground for bacteria and, and all that sort of thing. So, um, okay. So what I want to point out here, I, I find it really interesting. Traditionally, we've had a lot of different herbs that have been used for arthritis is kind of a general term. Like in the past, we didn't really break it down as to what type of arthritis it was so much. Mm. It was just, you know, we knew somebody had these aching joints that were wearing out and for whatever reason. And herbs were used to, uh, to, to help either... Uh, as a treatment to heal it entirely and restore, or just to uh, kind of get rid of some of the pain and, and irritation. But um, now we're starting, this is where the science is pretty interesting, we're starting to find out more about exactly how some of these herbs are working. And it's really good to know because uh, they're trying to, to create drugs to do some of the things that herbs have been doing all along. And we're getting real specific. So um, in this breakdown that's happening to the cartilage, there are a couple of different cytokines that are 
uh, in the spotlight right now, and I'm going to put my pointer towards them so you can see. Again, kind of a long word. One of them is called, and these are really important for a lot of these processes, tumor necrosis factor alpha. Short word for it is TNF alpha. And um, it has a positive role to play, like it'll help get rid of tumors, for example. Um, but it, it also can be a player in this kind of uh, destructive inflammation of healthy tissue. Then the other one is there's a family of interleukins. And this particular one, interleukin 1 beta, IL1 beta, those two are the big players in breaking down cartilage. So, um, and they've been found in elevated levels in the synovial membrane. You may remember I showed you that membrane, mm -hmm. that uh, synovial mm -hmm. fluid and in the cartilage of people who have osteoarthritis. And um, one of the things they found is if they could inhibit the TNF alpha, it reduced inflammation. And if they inhibited that interleukin-1 beta, it prevented cartilage destruction, right? So now we're starting to look, they're looking for drugs to do this. We are finding out what herbs and plant phytochemicals already do this. Nice. And that's how they are working to protect our bones. So we're gonna go through that now of, with some of the um, things that are known to work. You ready? Ready. Okay. I'm ready. <laughs> uh, by the way, for, to understand more about this, go to uh, in this database, and it's attached to this osteoporosis link. Look up inflammation pathways that give you the details mm -hmm. of what's going on with all that. Nice. All right. So first of all, flavonoids. Now, these are all... Um, good studies that have been done on the on the plants and their phytochemicals and uh, flavonoids are um, uh, in a lot of different plants um, you may have heard of isoflavones they're used a lot for things like menopause um, and breast cancer and that sort of thing uh, they have a very healthy effect on the cartilage metabolism they can reduce that inflammation and that immune response that's gone crazy. Mm. And the way they do it is, um, well, there's some, there are a number of enzymes also involved in that, and they help reduce those enzymes too. So here we see, I've listed the different cytokines that they bring down, including that tumor necrosis factor. Mm -hmm. And, oh, COX-2, we've got to get into the pain reliever stuff, too. Um, in fact, um, I might just mention a little bit about that before we go on so you understand why this is so important. And also to give us some example of flavonoids. Okay. Or where to find them. All right. So you're reading this and you're going, hmm, flavonoids. Mm -hmm. Um all right, so I don't have it attached separately here. In that case, you can just go into the search box. And you, there are a bunch of different, it, you know, chemistry is really complicated. So there are a bunch of different categories, but here's the main one, flavonoids. Mm -hmm. And again, up at the top, these are like, there's kind of a hierarchy. These are, um, for example, phenolic compounds, if you clicked on that. When you're learning about plants, the phenolic compounds are really important medicinally. So it's good to learn something about them and where we get can get a lot of them. Mm -hmm. um, and so flavonoids is listed as a phenolic compound. That's like the heading for flavonoids, okay? So that's the chemistry. 
Yeah, that this correct? is chemistry. This is, okay. this is about the phytochemicals themselves. Mm -hmm. When you're learning about plants, you're going to see a long list of constituents that may mean absolutely nothing to you. Mm -hmm. And you mm -hmm. go, why in the world do I need to even know that? If mm -hmm. I know that it helps arthritis, that's enough. For well, <clears throat> this is another aspect of the herbal database is that for those of us who really want to learn the science and break it down and learn the chemistry, the biology, this is an absolute uh, PhD program, yeah. if not several. Yeah. But uh, just flavonoids alone, is that a chemical or is that? Well, they're molecules and they're combinations of, there's something called functional groups. Uh, and that's also in here that you can learn about. Uh, but they're, they're assemblages of little groups of different types of chemicals that are used. And um, so here mm -hmm. um, okay. is, you know, there's a certain geometry involved in them. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, in, they're synthesized by plants in response to infection. They're active against bacteria and viruses, including HIV and uh, respiratory syntactical virus. Um, and they include a range, it's like all of these flavones, flavanols, flavanones, all of these are flavonoids, okay? So mm. it really, you, you can go down the rabbit hole pretty far. Yeah, I see this. Well, here's one that stands out that seems to be interesting to the ordinary participants as myself, is that the flavonoids, where is this is the both the reds and the yellows are flavonoids uh, in the fall colors. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's right. right. Exactly. They're there all the time, but mm -hmm. you can't see them. So when the leaves change color, the other things see what's happening is those flavonoids in those uh, in the leaves, the green leaves that you're seeing. What they're doing is they're protecting the leaf from intense sunlight. Uh. And so uh, when the leaves are about to go, they, you know, the other things go first and then you see their sunglasses. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. So this is, it's a really interesting area and it kind of mm -hmm. basic. It's like everybody should know about flavonoids. Okay. Okay. Um, so right. it's, it's basically a chemical. Would you it, say? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This right. is, but um, we're going to move into the flavonoids. Where, where are the plants and the uh, medicinals? Where the flavonoids are? Well, okay, let's... Um, uh, <laughs> I'm giving you a workout here on your database today. Uh, you know, you can find... When you get into the specifics, like the flavonoids are in so many plants, I haven't even bothered to connect them okay. to a plant. But if you want to drill down, for example... Um, Flavino lignin, or, or let's see, let's go to ostragalin. That's a flavonoid, and here you see plants that have high amounts oh, of yeah. ostragalin. And there's the red wine. Maybe that's why the red wine <laughs> is, uh, is such a medicinal. Well, if you look at red wine, let's go to red wine. <laughs> um, it's also got procyanidin. Well, guess what? Procyanidin, if we go to procyanidin, look, it's connected to osteoarthritis. Oh, how about that? Because mm -hmm. you know how you've heard for eons, mm -hmm. uh, and mostly in Europe, yeah, how the one glass of red wine a day is, has contributed to good health? Yeah, for many reasons. And so these are, are plants mm. that have, uh, including cocoa, that have high amounts of procyanidin. Mm -hmm. And up here, you can see some of the things that it does. It prevents the breakdown of collagen, mm -hmm. not just the collagen in your joints, but skin collagen. And if you go here, it's being purple, that's going to tell you more about what kind of chemical it is, too. Mm -hmm. um, and if you lift up the information panel, you're going to see, um, here we go, right off the bat, boom. Mm -hmm. This is a study that suggests that they can be used to mitigate osteoarthritis pathogenesis. And pathogenesis just means like the progression, the way it's developing. Uh -huh. So any okay. of these foods, and we always want to go with foods as our main mm -hmm. um, 
main area and build around it. So apples, if you wonder why apples are good for you. Um, okay. And so. also you have, there's the boron and yeah. uh, there was yeah. citric acid. So I'll just run through some of these. Uh, we're we're going to go back okay, to that good. panel in a second because mm -hmm. it does go through them specifically. But essential oils are this color. These two essential oils, frankincense and lemon eucalyptus, oh, and myrrh, mm -hmm. they help. Um, then we've got beta-glucans. The, there's the boron, chondroitin sulfate, glucosamine. Uh, we'll get into the hyaluron in a minute. That's used as an injection uh, into the joint uh, if you're getting uh, those uh, cortisol or hyaluron injections to kind of put something back in as a cushion if mm. it's getting to be bone on bone we'll talk about that and maybe towards the end of the show but that's short-lived right an injection is short-lived well the cortisol la can last for about maybe six months you know it depends uh -huh. hyaluron lasts longer but you know you have to repeat it um the cortisol is faster acting than the hyaluron, but the hyaluron lasts longer. Mm -hmm. uh, what, and you can't repeat cortisol injections very often. It's like you can't keep doing it right. for your lifespan. Right. Because the cortisol itself, that, that does damage to the joint too. So it's like... It's a, it's a momentary or temporary relief. Yeah. I mean, ideally we want to get right to what would enhance in the body its own natural we, and before healing. we get to bone on bone because once it's bone on bone mm -hmm. the cartilage is gone you're not going to build it back hmm. and that's why they do joint replacements um and that's why we're looking at and that's why we're looking at this now and why you all want to learn all this stuff mm -hmm. because you all have joints we mm -hmm. all have joints we want to keep them functioning um, now, some of the symptoms, I'll go ahead and talk about symptoms of osteoarthritis. One of the, uh, this one stands out. If you get hear a crackling sound in your joint, mm. call, it's called, the medical term is crispus. Uh, that's an indication that you are have it. Um, you may not feel any pain at that point, mm -hmm. um, but that's an indication that it's kicking in. Um, there is a uh, pain, uh, with osteoarthritis, um, the pain comes on later in the day, mm -hmm. uh, with rheumatoid arthritis, it's first thing in the morning. And then I've always heard dampness too. That's weather. That's weather. And, mm -hmm. um, let's see, I don't have weather connected here, but. Uh, there is a whole section here about there's a, it's a meteoropathy is a term for that. Mm -hmm. um, we've got now knee osteoarthritis. You can click on and learn about that more specifically here. Uh, it is, um, you know, all this basically the same kinds of things that we're interested in for osteoarthritis in general apply to this so it's not like it's really different so yeah. you go through both of them because some of the stuff i've added to here i haven't put up here i have to keep yeah you things keep... from being too crowded sure, sure and um so learn about you know go through it both of these because that's the most common I have a, an interesting experience to report because I do, um, I've been working with my knees for quite a while. Uh -huh. This is really, I, I'm curious about it. Um, and I had that symptom that you described, but I've been doing the uh, MSM with the boron uh -huh. for about mm, probably six or more weeks. Yeah. And I have noticed specifically with the boron that there's been a little more fluidity uh -huh. in my knee area. But this is the part that I've never experienced. When I walk now, where I used to have kind of a tension in the knees, uh -huh. they were almost like a stiffness. Uh -huh. I'm walking and I almost feel like from my hip down, my leg jiggles a little bit. It's like 
it has all this extra movement. Excellent. And when I place it on the earth, yeah, I'm going through a very different experience of my nice. weight on the earth. Yes. And a, a part of it feels like I'm going to lose my balance because I don't feel like I have as much control. Uh -huh. But the stiffness from before was I could calculate how my leg was going to go. Yeah. And now it's like this jiggling <laughs> from like my a, hip too. You're like a kid again. I, <laughs> I, I am. Hold. I'm going through this very new experience. But I thought I'd share that in case. You Thank know. you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I love it for everybody to share their experiences because that's how we all benefit. Now, uh, just going down, I'm back to this main screen. Oh, I want to go through this, I think, first. I mean, you can keep asking questions and we can tour around. Sure. Um, uh, NEEP hydrotherapy uh, with conventional physiotherapy in the treatment of osteoarthritis. That's a trial. They found that water therapy helps. Um, this, his, he has a certain type of hydrotherapy. That just means water therapy, you know, cold water baths. Hmm. His method and it is you can find it in the database you can look up this uh neep or night hydrotherapy and read about it but one of the things he did focus on was quick cold water immersions like really cold water for a Ooh, minute right. and then warm and in herbal medicine of course we use different things not just plants we, we learn all about massage and uh, um, hydrotherapy and nutrition so we know that alternating between hot and cold helps circulation. Right. And uh, so they have yeah. found that that can be helpful. Mm -hmm. But now let's get down into some of the other things that really help. Have you heard of pycnogenol? No, I haven't. It's sold as a supplement, but uh, it comes from pine bark originally. Oh. Okay. And what I want to do here in this section, as you, if you're in the database, read this up because they start uh, comparing using these natural supplements or herbs to the drugs that they currently use to mm -hmm. treat. Right. And they are finding over and over again that um, these herbs are as effective or more effective without the side effects. In fact, I think I'm going to have to just stop for a second and talk about the painkillers. Okay. And I'm uh, just curious because you're saying pycnogenol comes from pine bark. Yeah. Uh, and I'm, okay. Maritime. So do you have a way to prepare it from No, pine bark? it's from a certain type of, it, oh. it's, it has to be extracted in a lab. But, okay. And it comes from a certain type of, in fact, I'll click on pycnogenol. But it makes me think, you know, I'm surrounded by pines right now. I'm already taking the bark off and pine soaking bark in has the... is helpful. Any pine bark and, and the pine needles, doing baths and pine needles and that sort of thing is helpful. Okay. Um, right now, where what this is focused on is where there have been actual studies done. Okay. Um, and so here, if you go to pycnogenol, you can see there are a lot of studies that show that yeah. it's very powerful stuff. Jet lag, um, uh, cardiovascular risk factors are reduced, and uh, menopause. I mean, the list is just huge of what pycnogenol does. So if you're of a mind to get, whoops, I clicked on the wrong thing. We're going to take a little trip, I think. Oh, um, there's your breadcrumb. Yeah. So uh, anyway, uh, you see me... it's for liver cancer, hepatitis C, hmm. prostate cancer. Um, anyway, we're getting off topic there. And so, uh, oh, but I wanted to talk about the painkillers. So mm -hmm. um, the NSAIDs, in fact, let's go to NSAIDs because this is what they do. They say they can't really help you until you get to the point where they can do a joint replacement or the injections and um, these are the non-steroidal drugs they'll give you uh, a Tylenol or um, you know that sort of thing right and it turns out there's the way those work is there are two different pathways in fact let's go to inflammation pathways 
this is important, you guys, because you're going to want to know why it is you're saying no to Tylenol when you're really, really hurting. Hmm. And you really want to have something for the pain. And um, you're going to just be tempted like crazy to take one of these uh, aspirin or there's a whole range. Of mm -hmm. Okay, so please read this about the inflammation pathways. Uh, there are two branches and you may have heard, some people have heard about COX-1 and COX-2. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's the cyclooxygenase pathway. So they make prostaglandins that is what causes the pain and the inflammation and all of that. Um, these painkillers inhibit the COX-1 and the COX-2. Well, it turns out that the, uh, the COX-1, you've got to have to protect your gut lining. And if you knock out both COX-1 and COX-2, your gut lining is vulnerable and it starts to break down. You get ulcers, bleeding stomach. Mm -hmm. You've heard about aspirin possibly causing bleeding stomach. Well, right. any of them can do that right. if they knock out both of them. So then they went, okay, well, let's just find painkillers that just knock out COX-2 and leave COX-1 alone. And that seemed like a really good idea. And I have to say, I thought found it very, very attractive. Um, but... Then they found out that um, the uh, those painkillers, while they do help at a superficial level, um, they are increasing behind the scenes when you're feeling just fine. They're increasing uh, the tissue's uh, tendency towards this long-term tissue damage. Um, and I'm going to read this part. I didn't really, yeah, I meant, remember I mentioned tumor necrosis factor mm -hmm. and interleukin one, right? Those major cytokines that eat up the joints. Yeah. Well, it turns out that um, it's feeding that. Yeah. So it, when you are, oh. it's because. So you're getting, you're alleviating the pain, but you're deteriorating the yeah. actual, the root. Because COX-2 and COX-1 are also involved in regulating those. So when you take out the COX-2, wow. those aren't being regulated anymore. And so they're just having a good old time chewing up cartilage. So. Interesting. Yeah. So. Um, what, and this is, you know, this is so indicative of our medicinal uh, world right now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, how many people and, and unfortunately, people are getting addicted to the pharmaceuticals mm -hmm. because they're alleviating the pain or this or that. And then we find, and I mean, the list of symptoms that are attached to pharmaceuticals today, yes. this is basically, I mean, we're showing a very simple breakdown here. Yeah. But this is why, again, we need to be advocates of our own health and one another. Yeah. Because, it, you know, and that's been the fix it, immediate gratification mm -hmm. on our planet. Like, just get me out of this pain. In the meantime, we lose a leg over it. <laughs> yeah. Or a hip. Or a hip. Uh, right. So... Here I've shown an example of an herb that bypasses the COX-1 and COX-2 to get rid of pain. Mm. Okay. Uh, nettles. Good old stinging uh, nettles, nettles comes to right. save us once again. Yeah. Uh, nettle leaf extract. What the research is showing is that this extract inhibits, goes straight to the the bone, you might say, mm. by inhibiting that TNF alpha mm -hmm. and the IL one beta, mm. and um, we didn't really get into the part about this other pathway, the LOX pathway. But you can uh, encourage y'all to read about it because that's involved too. Um, so, because it inhib directly inhibits the two enzymes that are cytokines that are eating up your cartilage, mm. you may not go, oh my God, that really was fabulous for relieving the pain. I mean, it'll help. But yeah. And then there's ertification, which is a whole other topic that does relieve pain. Um, I, we don't have time to get into it. Look up stinging nettle on the, in the database. But 
it goes right to the core of the problem by inhibiting those cytokines that are eating the cartilage. Um, wow. And um, okay, I have to ask, it's a little off track, but I'm thinking of dear ones in my life who are uh, experiencing chronic pain. Yeah. So it would seem that we would follow the same pathway, like how you're describing stinging nettle is that it does it bypasses what would deteriorate the cartilage. Yes, if you're not taking COX-1 inhibitors and right. COX-2 inhibitors, you're not doing that. Right. It's always about what we're not doing also. Okay, so you're not taking NSAIDs. You're no NSAIDs, no opiate drugs. Right, no and opiate drugs. None because, of those. Okay. And, and so you don't want those things. They do so much damage. Um, you want to use herbs that can help with pain. I'm going to show you. We're going to go back to osteoarthritis. I'm going to show you what gets rid of the pain Okay. Um, and helps by actually helping with the healing of the whole thing, too. Okay, because I'm just wondering. I don't want us to get off too far, but it's okay. We got a couple we, hours. All right. It's like, could we use the same approach and application to okay the two individuals I'm thinking about who have had a uh, spinal injury because due to medical harm? Yeah. Right. And one of the painful results of that is the scar tissue is developing. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's creating even additional pressure mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. the nerve. Mm -hmm. So how it's almost like we don't want to increase the scar tissue. You understand how I'm trying to take yeah, your same approach? Yeah, although, uh, you know, you have to, this is where it's in, worthwhile to learn a little bit about the biochemistry involved. Yeah. Because yes, there, um, is it the tumor necrosis factor that's involved mm -hmm. on that? Maybe not. Is it um, the, uh, the interleukin-1? I see. That's involved. I see. Um, maybe, maybe not. So okay. that's why it's worth taking a little bit of time to find out what's involved in that damage, doing the damage, and then what kinds of things come into play. Um, and the database, as I discover that, I'm including that in the database. Um, for example, one of the enzymes that is uh, involved is this matrix metalloproteinase okay something that we need uh, in our body it does good things but this the shorthand is mmps that's another one of the enzymes that breaks down cartilage and so they're looking at drugs that are mmp inhibitors mm -hmm. to stop that enzyme in its tracks well, here are herbs and and phytochemicals that do that. Okay. So, Dakota, when you do uh, private consultations, mm -hmm. is this one of the paths? I mean, do you go to this extent of the chemistry trail? Well, do you it do depends. This extent you know, of research? I mean, I do, but I don't tell it people. You know, I'm not right. going to go through it with people because it makes them fall right. asleep. But um, because I'm seeing how the depth of your approach to understanding uh, the root of pain or illness to the pathway of healing, your advocacy is extremely extensive that no, that most doctors don't do, or they are so specialized, they're all uh, separated. Mm -hmm. I, I think what I'm trying to do is I think you know, I have always recognized you're in a class of your own, but, and you're offering this information, but at the same time, you are also teaching, mm -hmm. right? You, you're teaching mm -hmm. some, a very, a very new medical advocate that we do not have mm -hmm. in our culture. Yeah. I, and I just feel it's important to yeah, it, recognize and, that. Well, thank you. But, and it's important for everyone to um, take responsibility for their own health by realizing that first of all the doctors don't know everything mm -hmm. now the functional medicine doctors are probably among the best but um nobody knows everything exactly and, and that's why i made this database because i don't know everything 
I forget things. I need to be able to quickly come back and go, oh, yeah, right. I forgot. So here you can read about these inhib these MMP enzymes and the plants that can inhibit them. Um, yeah. And up here, again, you'll see that they're involved with skin aging, osteoarthritis, knee osteoarthritis. So they're, they're big players in those areas. Mm -hmm. um, so let's go back up to osteoarthritis. And did you notice AMLA was in there? Oh, I missed that. Okay, let's go back to MMP inhibitors. Oh, uh, yeah, Dear yeah. Woman is taking AMLA for everybody that's curious. I'll just click on yeah, that. Yeah, as a, uh, a vitamin C supplement. And I am finding, I feel that. Yeah. Stronger it does than... a lot more than vitamin C. So mm. be sure you come here and AMLA. see what else is happening. And that's what I like, too, is like there's so many things to choose from, as you can see. Um, it's a good idea to pick out things that cover the, all the bases of what's going on with you. So, for example, an omelet, it's anti-aging. It helps prevent the obesity, um, cellulitis, fluoride. So let's say you're in the city and mm -hmm. you're getting a lot of fluoride, you know, in your shower water or whatever. Um, you're getting, you want to prevent aging. Um, you're worried about your kidneys, by the way. As we get older, we lose uh, about 3% of the uh, nephrons in our kidneys. So um, mm -hmm. it's helpful for uh, HPV, hypothyroid, let's see, hyperthyroid, um, it's an MMP. So uh, you, as you click through this top bar, that's a scroll bar because there's too much here to show on the screen so i'm scrolling through all of the things that it <clears throat> that it does or it's associated with at a higher mm -hmm. level substances for cardiovascular health for cancer mm -hmm. um you know again i'm i'm uh looking at this demonstration of the herbal database and i want to acknowledge that you know in a, in uh perhaps an ordinary presentation you know you might be in the front of a, an audience and you're and you might even have a powerpoint presentation and once you say it it's over and again i want to reiterate the value of what you're presenting here dakota for our viewers and listening audience that you are essentially giving this extensive uh database to each of us and it's ongoing. This is very different. This is kind of like the future of presentation. It's almost like every presenter should be up there with their database. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, no matter what category or uh, topic, it's like the PowerPoint should be replaced by the database. Well, it's very interactive. As you see, we can go anywhere and see instantly whatever it is that we want to talk about or know. Exactly. And it's like, I mean... If we go to your database, we can pull up everything plus what you've presented, right? And what you offer in each class, right? And and mostly, you know, what really kicked us off is I wanted people to uh, start to understand how much is here for mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, this is a really interesting study that compares taking pycnogenol with um let's see what was it there we're comparing okay so pycnogenol comes in a it looks like here it's in capsules yeah. oral capsules yeah, yeah yeah um and that's what we would look for in a supplement uh yeah it's it's a pretty available actually no this one was uh done against a placebo there are other studies against drugs but you'll see here against a placebo in three months how much improvement there was for people um I'm, we don't have time to go through every bit of this but how much they took and how much they improved over three months is all there okay i lost track with pycnogenol was for the osteo um osteoarthritis yeah in this case that's what we're talking about okay okay it just t will tell you it, this is a good study that will give you an idea of uh, the effectiveness and you know if you're going to pay money for something you want to know gee how does this compare with other things and mm -hmm. so learn about it and and compare all because you're going to see we have got a lot of options here 
Um, okay, going getting into pain. Uh, here's this is a study, mm -hmm. and again for things down in this section that are blue like this, don't click on that link because it'll take you out of the database. You're going to do a right click and then say open the link in a new tab and you're good to go. Um, well, but the topical black seed oil mm -hmm. is better than Tylenol for pain relief. Remember we were talking about don't do NSAID, NSAIDs. Yeah. Well, here's a study that so shows. That's, see, black seed oil is not like a uh, daily supplement. It's a. It, the black seed oil is a supplement you can take internally, and, and really? um, uh, let's just go to that for a second, yeah. and then we'll come back okay. here. It's probably um, good I don't know this, so I can ask a lot of questions. Yeah. <laughs> so um, here's a scroll bar down here again, uh, because there's so much here. Mm -hmm. And as we're scrolling over here, you see other colors. Um, in this area, the, anything that's this color of blue is also a wild food. Um, and let's see here, black seed oil. So we're going to click on that. And oh, OK, here's an example of where black seed oil uh, helps prevent some of the damage from a drug mm. or a toxin that's in the environment, OK? Mm -hmm. um, and Let's pull this up. Uh, so here are details about black seed oil itself. These are all mm -hmm. studies. These are links. You can click on those and go to another page. You're not going to lose the database. Here we see uh, these. You're going to have to do this method again of uh -huh. right clicking. Okay, but. Um, there are a lot of toxins like carbon tetrachloride. You're not going to be taking that, but it just shows how good it is in protecting your liver that carbon tetrachloride didn't. Tetrachloride, isn't that also in the, the boron? Or maybe no, I got my I notes didn't. mixed. And what's a good dosage of black seed oil? Pull this up. Um, and I'm sure I can when, put Yeah, when, if. Usually I'll put doses in, but if I didn't, then you go to one of those links and that'll tell you. Okay. Um, here's about how it helps cancer, how it helps the liver. Wow. Um, it helps diabetes, weight loss, mm. the hair, the skin, uh, MRSA. So there's a lot. Yeah. yeah. So here, you know, it's like if you've got something that covers all these bases, you don't have to take everything. You know, and nobody yeah. has the money or the time, patience sure. or time. But if you know that, wow, look at all the things it's doing, and that's really all my concerns. Mm -hmm. um, but it's very pain relieving. Um, knee osteoarthritis. So here's, this is another study, a separate one. I didn't in include that in that other location, but. Uh, topical application reduces pain in patients with knee osteoarthritis, okay? Nice. So we've got black seed oil. You can take it internally for a lot of different things mm -hmm. um, and apply it externally. So we'll come back here and pull this info panel up again and scroll down. Um, I might come back to this section uh melatonin now that's really interesting uh -huh. what do you think of when you think of melatonin taking uh, it as a supplement um my understanding of the melatonin is um uh, kind of uh assist me in my sleep calming yeah calm sleep yeah and isn't it melatonin that's in or is it serotonin in the brazil nuts uh, Brazil nuts is selenium. A selenium, well. Okay. But there's a lot of melatonin in plants, mm. in, in different plants. Uh, but, and I always thought of it too, is like you think melatonin supplement, oh, that's for sleeping. Mm -hmm. But it turns out that it's so much more. It's an incredible, remember we were talking about the reactive oxygen species a little bit ago? Right. Well, it helps to um, neutralize those. It's a powerful antioxidant. Huh. And melatonin, if you're taking it as a supplement, 
uh, it's one of the things that helps uh, to protect the joints against osteoarthritis. Oh. Um, and here are some studies about it. And it, uh, it, it works against the IL-1 beta and the TNF-alpha. Remember we are talking about those? Right. Um, so it uh, helps with the severity of pain and quality of life in patients with knee and hip osteoarthritis. Mm. And if you're taking it, it could even prevent osteoarthritis. Okay? Yeah, that's what I heard when you said that, because I know of a mother that's been giving her children melatonin. And they were aging from like age four uh -huh. to 13. Okay. And she gave it to them every evening. Okay. Um, uh, it's very safe. And I'm going to look up melatonin right now just to give you a little bird's eye view. I mean, that's pretty cool, a pre uh, preventative. Yeah. So here under melatonin supplements, um, you've got melatonin as a phytochemical right here just to learn about it chemically and some of the stuff that it does. But as a supplement, not, oh, here are plants that it's in, oranges, ah. fennel seed, cherries, bananas, um, and these are just a few of the plants. Uh, so nice. let's go back to the supplements. And I'm just going to pull this green up. People watching the video can pause this to see, yeah. you know, so they can see some of these studies. Here's one of the things, though. The con melatonin content of supplement varies widely. So you may not be getting what you think you're getting. Mm. So it's worth, if you're serious about it, getting it from a reputable company. Mm -hmm. Um, so these are just a few of the things that it does. And here are interactions with drugs. Yeah, okay. So for example, if you're taking benzodiazepines, be very careful about taking melatonin supplements. Hmm. Just a few of them. Yeah. Um, and benzo, uh, what, what would that typically be? Is that for seizures? Benzo. They use benzos for, uh, let's just look it up real quick. Benzo. <laughs> We're going all over the place today. Diazepines. Okay. It's a very highly addictive drug. That's why I've got it. Uh, it's poisonous. Um, it's, well, we won't get into Toxidrome, but um, Xanax. It, you oh, heard of Xanax? it's in that family. Valium. Oh. Clonopin. Whoa. These are all, and then That's here, serious. if you want to withdraw from it, this is, click on this link for information mm -hmm. on how to withdraw. Wow. But here are, mm. um, yeah. It seems like, yeah, right. You shouldn't take anything else when you're on this. Wow. Well, this relates, though. Older people, mm -hmm. newly prescribed sleeping pills like benzodiazepines mm. and Z drugs, have over double the odds of a hip fracture in the first two weeks. Wow. Because of the deterioration on the bone or the yeah, cartilage. Yeah, but yeah, it would be. Um, wow. Yeah. And we've heard of that. You know, I've heard of people uh, more elderly, but that have been in the hospital for something. They've been put on drugs and then they, they, uh, break or fracture their bone like easy yeah very easily yeah I um, Vashmir we have a lot to be aware of don't we yeah so you can get off it here uh, these links will help you learn how to get off it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and you don't need it that's the thing yeah you don't need it we've got these powerful powerful plants yeah. So let's go back to okay. osteoarthritis. See, I didn't even have to type the whole thing in. Yeah. Okay. And click the screen up again and see what else we've got in our little medicine cabinet. Mm -hmm. We did pycnogenol. We're skipping through this part. Um, melatonin, essential oils. This is a study that was shown. Um, that essential oil uh, massage helped reduce the pain mm -hmm. 
and the oils were rosemary, peppermint, um, lavender, marjoram, eucalyptus. They're not the only ones, and they improved um, sleep for these people. And what do you know about the magnesium sprays? Okay. Because that's, that's a typical application for... More for muscles. Muscles, uh -huh. not so much for the joints. No. Okay. I mean, magnesium is a player because um, the, all these tissues need magnesium mm -hmm. for, you know, the different kinds of chemical, biochemical pro uh, processes. Now, rose hips is very interesting, and I've used those rose hips. Um, uh, I had uh, the opportunity to have a condition called cauda equina, which is one of those um, spinal injuries where the pain is beyond the scale into agony mm -hmm. that nothing worked on. Mm -hmm. And um, I... I had the opportunity to use rose hips for that, and I can verify that this is well very good stuff. So you're talking about like a uh, serious pain, nerve, yeah. nerve ending, spinal pain. nerve ending, spinal yeah. nerve ending. Okay. Um, and uh, so rose hips turn out to be very good for osteoarthritic pain. Mm -hmm. Right? It's not so much that it's rebuilding the joint or anything like that. It, this is what you go to instead of Tylenol. This is one of the things you go uh -huh. to instead of Tylenol. Um, and uh, these are studies that, uh, mm. in fact, there's a dosage here. Now, if you're going to use the rose hips for pain, um, yeah, you can go out and collect them and make your own. And that's, uh, you know, really a good thing to do. Or you could buy rose hip powder. And that's what they're using to get the higher dose. Mm -hmm. But if you really are like tempted to get that Tylenol, you know, and you really need something um, that you potent. can count on, that's potent and fresh, I'm going to show you where to go. So this is a section on rose hips. There are a couple of rose hip products that have been developed uh, high end where they've preserved mm -hmm. all of the constituents that play a role. Mm -hmm. To make sure that they're good and um, so uh, we're under rose hips and these are the two brands there's th and they this comes from europe um and this is gonna you can this is a big chart that you'll have to mm. actually we can pull this all the way up lift that up and it just shows that not all rose hips are made equal. So mm. content of active ingredient, there's the scale. Mm -hmm. And then you can scroll through this and for the different levels of these. And, and if you go to the link, you'll see which brands they're talking about. Okay. But for 100%, this is this brand. Okay, now I've got myself into trouble. I'm going to have to go back down here and go back this way. All right. And um, that's this brand, Hyben mm -hmm. Vital from Europe. It's available here. And then there's another brand. And these are the ones they've been doing most of the studies with. Mm -hmm. um, if you're doing like a regular rose hip powder that you got from, you know, a good herb store, you might have to do a higher dose. I'd keep it in the freezer. Mm -hmm. um, it's and that's what like I a use. Freeze dried with, powder or something. No, no, you're gonna just get a regular powder. Okay. Make sure it's a powder because there's seeds in it. If you try to powder it, whole rose hips yourself, it's yeah. really hard. Okay. Uh, unless you have a good good equipment. Um, but I used a for my condition, I used just a I think it was like rose hip powder from either Frontier. I think it was from Frontier. So it was kind of like what you get. And it worked mm -hmm. um, for a very bad thing. But hmm. I think it's a good idea for the people that are really suffering to just make sure that, that you're getting this really strong stuff. Okay. Right. Um, all right. Rose hips instead of Tylenol. Right. And black seed oil. And black seed. And there's more. And there's more. We're not done. That's right. And there's pycnogenol. Remember those flavonoids that also help? Yeah, and they were in our foods. Yep. 
And that's where the colors, you know, when you talk about colors of foods, eat all the colors of yeah. the rainbow. Um, that's how you make sure you're picking up the whole a wide range uh, of flavonoids. That's why it's good to eat flowers. Flowers and fruits and vegetables right. are, are good medicine. Um, okay. And of course, you know, when we eat these foods and flowers and the colors, our awareness of their medicinal property is part of our healing. Yeah. Just to go into that more subtle realm of awareness heals. Yeah, and taking care of ourselves that way sends a message that, you know, we do want to heal. Mm -hmm. Okay, so getting back into food, avocado. Yeah. Um, avocado prevents both osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis mm. by preventing pro-inflammatory prostaglandin synthesis in the connective tissue. Well, I love my avocado, that's mm -hmm. for sure. <laughs> now, uh, there's a product that, besides eating avocados, mm -hmm. there's a product that's been developed using uh, avocado, it's called avocado soybean unsap unsaponophilables. Oof, a tongue twister. Um, and I'm going to pull that up. Uh, what see, is that do I have word? it here? Here we go. Un Unsapophins are, uh, it's weird that name, but sap saponins are like the soapy substances that are in plants. Oh. Okay. And so these are uh, to this again to get a product. I'm just going to go ahead and click on this link. Um, to get a product that has been tested to help with preventing and treating, mm -hmm. uh, in addition or, you know, instead of chondroitin, um, this is one of the, one of the brands. There's more than one brand of this. Oh, come on. So yeah, this has, yeah. this is going to have, this is the av avocado. This, uh-huh. These uns unsaponophiables. Okay. Unsap Sapophen is the word, unsapophen eyeballs. Um, oh, I like what it says. Whether you're busy, have an active lifestyle, or just choose to be happy, choose Athrosin. <laughs> yeah, not a bad price, really. But um, so okay. this is a good, another oh, good, nice. good, good. That's nice. Come on, stop that. I wonder where they're, uh, where it's coming out of. Well, you can what, go to the database says, and find it. <laughs> what did you say? You can go to the database and find it. And find it. But what was that? It said soy on sap. Well, there it's a combination. It's a soybean oil. Now, of course, I always am cautious about soybean oil yes. being GMO and all that stuff. No, soybean's getting a bad rap these days. Yeah. But there are some good things that it does. So mm -hmm, this is a okay. study that you can get to. In the from the database, mm -hmm. um, the guilt goes into detail on the management of osteoarthritis mm -hmm. just using these. Nice, okay. Mm -hmm. So you've got uh, yet another choice. Gosh, I feel like uh, my whole body is just healing from this journey. <laughs> you know, it's like I just feel like my cartilage and my bone is all <laughs> lapping it up as if I'm getting this. You know, and I am energetically. Mm -hmm. I'm taking all these supplements. Well, just knowing that we have these alternatives right. takes some stress away from us, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and then again, it's like part of it is like, what can I afford? Yeah. You know, I've only got so much money. How okay. am I going to do this? So that's one of the reasons yes. why I include so many things in here. You know, to, I want to speak to that, Dakota. Mm -hmm. um, it's very easy to start writing down seven, eight supplements. And something that I learned years ago, and I still believe this, is when you do a, um, a simple, like in tinctures, uh -huh. uh, rather than mix uh, a whole bunch of tinctures together, you do one medicinal at a time. And I have found that really valuable. And I just want to add this wisdom about our supplement research that we're doing here together, is that I find... Although I may go to the store or order five different supplements for, say, 
uh, joints, right? I like to do one supplement for a prolonged period of time mm -hmm. so I can uh, identify in my body yeah. what it's actually doing. Like, yeah. for instance, for a while there, I was doing MSM and boron together. Uh -huh. And um, no, I did MSM for a long time by itself. And I watched and I got a sense of my body. Then I did boron and I didn't do the MSM. Mm -hmm. And I watched what it did. Mm -hmm. And then I put the two together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was able to identify. And actually, yeah. there was a real, uh, you know, um, cooperation together yeah. that I felt. Yeah. So I kind of, that's my wisdom that I'd like to share. Is yeah, that, thank you for that. It's like, uh, and I agree, that to, the idea is always to um, keep things as simple as you can. Um, food being number one, staying mm -hmm. away from harmful substances, mm -hmm. uh, the drugs that do damage, um, uh, and trying one thing out at a time is really a good idea, like you say, to find out what it does. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to continue going through this list, and this is not everything, uh, but these are some of the big players. Cat's Claw. And, uh, and here's some information about how it works. Um, it quenches, there's getting back to these free radicals that do damage. A couple of the damaging ones can be peroxyl and superoxide radicals. Again, they have a good role to play in the body, but they can out of control do damage. So cat's claw helps to keep them from doing that. And, um, really strong antioxidant uh, it helps with chronic inflammation and uh, it protects cartilage there was a clinical trial that showed that it gave relief hmm. to people who are suffering from osteoarthritis and especially in the, of the knees um, it, this is a tells you about a placebo controlled uh, trial that was very effective so check that out Another, this is kind of surprising, celery seed extract. Um, this is quite powerful. This is uh, just one study um, who, gout, by the way, is a form of arthritis. And uh, celery seed extract is, let's see if I pick out something here. To, these are different studies, no side effects. Um, Okay, I'll go through this one. Subjects received 75 milligrams of celery seed extract twice a day for three weeks. At this higher dosage, subjects reported even better results than the pilot study. Statistically and clinically significant reductions were noted in pain scores. I'm getting Facebook notices. Um, in mobility and quality of life, no side effects. It can be diuretic, but it's diuretic without changing sodium and potassium balance. Uh, celery seed extract appeared to be particularly helpful for sufferers of gout. Um, uh, that 3MB is one of the constituents. You can read about it in a different area, like if you go to celery seed extract and learn all the things it does. So, you know, mm -hmm. when you're going through these, Go through them, find out, okay, well, what is celery? Do I need celery seed or cat's claw? Let's see what mm -hmm. they both cover. Mm -hmm. And um, so if we go. You can learn more about each one. Yeah, so let's go to celery seed. Right. And, um, and look at the things. And, of course, the quickie way to do it is just to use this scroll bar up here. And you see it's for hypertension, depression. Okay, so somebody with osteoarthritis might be depressed. They might have flatulence. Um, they might want something high in calcium. Of course, that's going to be more from the food. They, maybe they have H. pylori too. So uh, of the things you choose, well, gee, maybe it's celery seed. If you know you've got H. pylori, oh, and you tend to get urinary bladder infection, Okay, maybe this is the guy that you want to use, celery seed. Um, be sure and look at the cautions. 
Uh, here are more studies on celery seed itself. If you want to kind of, oh, not a whole lot in this section yet. I probably have work to do there. Um, but you see this study reduces blood pressure. Um, uh, that was an animal study. Uh, okay, that's a little complex, but that NFKB uh, kappa beta pathway is one of the pathways involved in inflammation. So that may be one of the ways that it's helping. Uh, cautions. Let's see what time. We I've always uh, associated celery with uh, enzymes. Um, but this is celery seed. Celery seed, yeah. So that would be, it's a different yeah. ingredient. Okay. But looky here, when you go to cautions, mm -hmm. this is for the seed extract. Yeah. Look at all these cautions. Look at all these wow. drug ex uh, interactions. Interesting. Now somebody might be thinking, oh, celery seed extract. That must be pretty harmless. That's, yeah. everybody eats celery seed. Well, right. you know, eating some celery seed in a potato salad is no big deal. Right. If you're taking the extract and you're taking these drugs, mm -hmm. uh, you could be in trouble. So you want to always look at the cautions, even for something that seems like, ah, that must be safe. Yeah, because, you know, I think that's an important point, Dakota, because even all the supplements we have access to, you know, we just go to a natural foods place these days and mm -hmm. we take them off the shelf. And the only, the major warning you see often is if you're pregnant yeah. or if you're taking drugs, but it, you know, it doesn't really indicate how warnful this really is. Well, what they that, do is they just say, take under the supervision of your doctor. Exactly. And that's supposed to cover all the bases and your doctor has his manuals and all that. And, um, but so, if you're doing it yourself, right. you need this, even for something that you think, ah, oh, that's, that's no big deal. Well, all, if you're taking any pharmaceutical drugs and you want to do anything natural alongside it, you need to be on the database. So, so you, you, it really is important that as we become more educated mm -hmm. in these areas, mm -hmm. that we have to really become educated about the warnful, you know, the warnings. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so here's celery itself, also called smallage. Mm -hmm. So you could go up here to compare, well, what does celery do? These are really important um, phytochemicals, which includes minerals that are in celery. Mm -hmm. And here we see we've, we've broken it down into the essential oil, celery root, the seed studies, and celery leaf. They Different parts of a plant right. can do different things. And then just for celery as a food, um, these are things that celery as a food help with. So, mm -hmm. uh, and taking it as an extract too. So let's go back to, again, to our osteoarthritis. And I think we're about done with the first panel, but we haven't even looked at any of the stuff up here. Mm -hmm. uh, there's usually a really helpful starter place <laughs> on, <laughs> on these uh, main information panels, and you can go from there. I think we're about at the end. Oh, avocado. Okay, we did avocado. Cat's claw. Mm -hmm. um, and then the celery, celery seed, seed extract. Let's see if there's any more. Devil's claw. Okay. Uh, oh, and Sam E. That's another supplement. So devil's claw. You can read about the studies here. Another medic uh, herbal uh, product. Whoops. Let's get rid of that. Um, studies hip osteoarthritis. Uh, here was a, a comparison of devil's claw with a European medication for pain relief. And the people who took Devil's Claw had as much pain relief as the people who took the medication with fewer side effects. And they needed fewer pain relievers throughout the study. So there's a, there's a meta-analysis of several different studies using this to treat arthritis. And it seems that it is effective in relieving joint pain. 
Um, so then we get into uh, another supplement. Um, a lot of you are going to be familiar with it, known as Sam E. Does again a lot of different things that are very very helpful. It's an anti-inflammatory pain reliever for people with osteoarthritis. And you can feel it pretty quickly, like within a week, but it might take longer. Uh, if you're taking it, you need to use it with certain B vitamins because they work together. Um, B12, B6, and folate. Folate is different from, B, uh, from folic acid, by the way. Don't count on folic acid in a supplement. Um, and uh, so there are studies here about uh, using SAMe for osteoarthritis, showing it's very effective. And here, in this case, there are some doses that are recommended. So I'm going to finally leave this opening panel here. And um, uh, let's see. Where do we want to go next? We've got well, I'll just talk about some of these in the green. Um, if you want to learn about the cortisol injection, you, you're considering that, learn about it. You know, come here and um, here's some basic information about what you can expect. It is a short-term kind of a thing. And uh, let's see, corticosteroids, that's the kind of drug category that these cortisol injections are related to. So you could learn more about that. Mm -hmm. um, okay, let's go back here to osteoarthritis. And um, let's see here. All right, so yes, turmeric is helpful. I didn't include it in that first screen, but if you go to turmeric, yeah. There's some combinations that are really good of turmeric and other herbs. Uh, pomegranate juice and eating pomegranates. Um, oh, I do want to go to this one. This is a, another uh, supplement made from Boswellia, which is Indian frankincense. Hmm. And I'm going to lift that up. Aflopin, is that how you pronounce uh -huh. it? It works if you're thinking about using Boswellia um, internally for anything. Uh, this is a brand of, of Boswellia that is um, it's just more effective. You'll than, have to describe Boswellia so oh, we can make okay. a comparison. Let's go up here. Indian frankincense. I will take a little tour for, for through frankincense. Okay. I think most people like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Can you smell it? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so the, it, there are different kinds. This, as you bring your the mouse over, you'll see there's often some uh, other information that pops up. So Boswellia is the genus, and Serrata is the species. So. Indian frankincense from India is Boswellia serrata. And um, they're not all exactly the same. So here, if you wanted to learn what this one did, it's good against biofilms. You know, I'm not going to go through all this, but I'll just scroll through for anybody that wants to freeze the screen and see cytokine cascade inhibitors. That's really important. Um, these are some of the things that it helps with, and you can learn about more. Mm -hmm. Okay, now finally we get to the genus. Boswellia is the genus. This is where we start getting into taxonomy. You could learn about the, the family that it belongs to, the Torchwood family, and all of these different sub areas, the genus, mm -hmm. uh, are part of the Torchwood family. And they may have something in common. So here we have different types of frankincense. Um, mm, here I thought it was an incense. Oh, well it is, but it's so I mean, much more. Yeah, I, uh, and an oil. 
yeah, the essential oil. So this is, uh, if you want to dig down into frankincense and the different oils and compare them. Okay. Um, here's, here, this is a good article on the differences between uh, frankincense cartaried from uh, Fariana Sacra. There are different variations. Um, so we were, okay, so the Basuela. Basuelia. Okay, so now, now we know that that is. That is the genus. Uh -huh. Okay, from frankincense. Yeah. Now we can compare. We can go back to, what was it, Al? Oh, yeah. Lynn? What was that? A lap Lynn. So a, a lap Let's go back up to, which one was There's it your, under? Your under, red under Indian. Yeah, but I've clicked on too many things. Oh, okay. So we're going to go down here. Okay. And um, so uh, you go. can read about it and, and what the doses are um, and how to use it. Here's a good article to read. I'll go ahead and click on that. Uh, the synergy of using Boswellia for osteoarthritis. Let's see how fast this comes up from Life Enhancement. Um, Okay, so this just kind of goes through more about what's happening in uh, uh, osteoarthritis. They still are thinking of it as wear and tear. We know better now. It is that, but so much more. But uh, mm -hmm. here you can read about how Boswellia uh, actually helps. Um, they're talking about this advanced extract that I just showed you. Uh, it's been shown uh, to potentially inhibit the tumor necrosis factor. Here we are with that again. Um, we, and these matrix metalloproteinases, these MMPs, and um, those are degrading the, the uh, cartilage. And then it prevented adhesion molecules, this is getting a little complex, but from increasing inflammation. So there's all these studies about how Boswellia does a lot of these same things of inhibiting the destruction mm -hmm. itself. Yeah. And it is a, another pain reliever. Um, so, so here's this... about this particular product, why this is a really good product. Um, if you're going to buy it, try to get something that it has a lot of evidence behind it and where they're really working hard to, to make sure it is what they say it's going mm -hmm. to be. Okay, so oh, nice. Um, okay, so that uh, a flapping oh, yeah uh, is from the Basuela. Yeah, it's, that's just the brand name. Uh, okay, it's the brand name. Okay, uh, it's a synergistic formulation, produced significant improvements in the pain score mm -hmm. and functional ability in as little as five days. Wow, so so much there. Yeah. So that's another option. Right. Um, let's see what time do is it? We've got about about five minutes. Oh, you have different time than I do. I have twelve forty-seven. Yeah, yeah. Well, we usually wrap it up. Oh, okay. Just about All right. ten of. So what else uh, do we want to look at here? Yeah, we have eight minutes. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's. <laughs> You know, obviously you can go on and, well, let's go up a little bit. Uh, we didn't really get up into here too much. Um, uh, that's going to get too, oh, I want to go over here. Um, this is a drug, an NSAID, and it's one that is commonly prescribed for osteoarthritis. That's why it's attached, and it does a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. However, if for some reason you're taking this instead of rose hips, mm -hmm. uh, vitamin C, E, sesame oil, which is in sesame oil, and melatonin help to offset some of the damage. But let's take a look at what's going on if you're taking this drug. So um, this, is, this is a typical drug that the Western medicine prescribes? Yeah for osteoarthritis. Okay. 
So there's an increased risk of heart attack and death. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, let's see, in, uh, in pregnancy, doubles the risk of miscarriage, although few over 65 are pregnant. Um, yeah, right. Uh, increased, okay, a lot, of, a lot about heart attack. That's one of the main things. You know, I, I just had, I just went trailed off because when you said risk of miscarriage and I went to uh, natural uh, birth control, uh -huh. natural abortion. Uh-huh. Very I mean, controversial topic. Yes, very controversial. Perhaps a whole show on that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. Be, all right. Yeah. options yeah especially with the threats of our Planned Parenthood right now uh, I just had to say that okay go ahead. yeah that's you know that's really dangerous too for women yeah um, anyway so so here are this drug can also bring on migraines hmm. um, it's used for osteoarthritis that's in case you're confused and you go well, gee wait a minute it brings on migraines but it used for osteoarthritis so you know, why are these two together? Mm -hmm. Just know these are important associations. And it's up to you to figure out what the associations are. Mm -hmm. That's part of uh, the advantage we have as humans is this amazing ability for thinking um, yes. and discovery. This is a place for you to make your own discoveries, you know, mm -hmm. what's relevant and important to you. You're yes. going to be led from one thing to another, according to what is relevant in your life, your circumstance, your interests. I'm not going to tell you, go from here to here to here to here. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to give you the breadcrumbs and show you things that are known to be associated. Right. Right. So rheumatoid arthritis. Let's go back up to arthritis again. And... Um, all right, so just in general, like arthritis is like a, you know, an abstract term that could cover anything. I just These, saw the association to moringa. I've been yeah. obsessed with growing moringa, and I think I fi they finally have sprouted. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So if you don't know what kind of arthritis, you know, you think you have it, any of these can be helpful. You know, just as general uh, supplements or herbs to take or whatever. Mm -hmm. Oh, here's the meteoropathy. That is about weather. Ah, okay. Yeah, because you hear that a lot. I mean, I grew mm -hmm. up with that. My grandmother, you know, oh, I can feel it's going to rain. I feel it in my knees. And it's true. And they're even calling it a new, there's a new disease. Of weather sickness. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, closing out, you'll see therapeutics glossary. Mm -hmm. You know, these are just kind of basically when I didn't really have when I'm creating this and I didn't really have a clear place to put something, <laughs> I would put it under here, and then gradually uh, as I, you know, as I find a new place. To put it, um, right. I, I might take it out of here. Okay, therapeutic glossary. Yeah, so that's the catch-all. On One the, of the catch-all the herbal database. Yeah, there's also a repertory catch-all and a phytochemical catch-all, but um, I got to have it in here. And until I figure out where I want to put it, it just goes here. And sometimes things will just stay here. But well, that's what uh, that is. Uh, Dakota, it might be time to, again, specify how people can access this database okay. and, and uh, the exchange that, the very generous exchange that you're offering for it. All right. It's at herbaldatabase.org, and you can try it out for one month for $5. Then it's $15 a month, which is... Uh, much less expensive than anything comparable, and there really isn't anything comparable. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, it's for everybody, really. It's for the doctor, the nurse, the herbalist, the uh, naturopath, the um, mother at home trying to take care of her family. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it doesn't really matter where you are in life uh, or if you have a condition that you really want to get a handle on it's it's for everybody right. 
And also a reminder that Dakota Granny Woman is available for online uh, consultations. And you can find her information and contact in the Herbal Database group on oh, Facebook. No, no. no. Uh, this show, Herbal Knowledge Keepers, or, yeah. has a Facebook group called Herbal Knowledge Keepers. Okay. Please join us there because that's where we can talk further about anything that came up in one of the shows. Or you mm -hmm. can say, hey, Dakota, would you please do a show on right. whatever. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, share your experiences. Some of you, I'm sure, have tried some of these things or you had a, a mm -hmm. you were on a drug that did or didn't help. Please share all of that with us because that's uh, in incredibly valuable way to learn and also you know uh, in that on Facebook uh, let us know if you've been listening to our shows uh, give us feedback and encourage others to join us absolutely look at the archives and I uh, want to acknowledge that this broadcast has been coming to you from consciousconsumernetwork.tv please go check out their other programs and I know that one of the co-producers Mel is uh, really promoting uh, her series on Dragonology and trust me this woman has done an extensive amount of research it's very highly recommended uh, very educational it'll raise your consciousness so please go and look for that and next Tuesday it'll be my other co-host Rebecca Hahn will join me for Get Lit and again I want to thank the Burian cafe here on passion play road in eureka springs arkansas you have given us a great uh, environment and sponsoring us for this internet and get lit also has a facebook page and we encourage you to find us on the social network mm -hmm. and again a reminder if you have a topic uh please submit it uh and uh mm -hmm. dakota will happily we will go into that database and we'll present that and answer your questions. So, Dakota, anything else? I think that that is plenty. Thank <laughs> you for, for hanging with us for a couple of hours. I hope it's been helpful. And uh, do let us know. We'll be glad to fill in any blanks. Absolutely. Love to all of you. We'll see you next Tuesday. Mwah. <laughs> Mwah. If we want to change the world, we must first change the media. Mainstream media exists for the purposes of indoctrination and manipulation of public perception. The world of free and independent media is growing, and with the upsurge in information now available in the public domain, it has never been easier to access free and independent media. The exploration of this information resulted in an experimental project which would provide a fully supported space for researchers, whistleblowers, and seekers of all kinds to express themselves and educate the world. On the 1st of January 2015, Conscious Consumer Network was launched to the world. Nobody thought we would make it this far, but CCN is the longest running free and independent media network of its kind. CCN is a unique collaboration of hearts and souls bringing you information from different perspectives to educate and inform. Since we started CCN, we have had only one desire, the pursuit of a free, fair, just, sustainable world, and this has not changed. Having overcome many challenges over the last two years, CCN is here to stay and we've got great things lined up for 2017. Help keep CCN on the air by supporting the 2017 Network Support Fund.